Okay, now today is going to be a bit different. It's going to be a hard to sharing. And today, I'll try to answer some of the common questions that come to this community. And just in case you have the same questions, hopefully that helps you immediately on your journey. But before that, I'm, I'm extremely grateful, you know, that today we are having more than 2,000 in terms of subs. I remember back at the point where it's 200, it was so difficult to climb. And I really couldn't imagine getting to 2,000 strong because each and every one of you watching this has been supportive. But some of the questions keep arising and commonly they look very similar and today's title suggests the most common question. Is it the right time to invest now? If you have been thinking about this, don't worry, this common question has came up so many, many times. Let me pull up two examples for you to see. Is it good time to be investing now? Is it good time to be investing? You need trust now. Now this question, this question must be reshaped. I, I would like to answer this question differently because at the root of this question is some fundamental problems. This question actually is a disguise of this real question, which is, is it a time that I can invest now to avoid any losses? That's why this question arises. Is it a time to invest now? Actually, the real bordering question to each and any new investor that's you know hoping to type that now is, is it a, a time that I can invest now to avoid losses? Now, the quick answer to that is, any investment always has the chance of potential losses. In fact, paper losses or negative performance at certain periods is part and parcel of the journey. Nothing is a straight line up. If you're looking for a straight line up, do, do go to invest in the CPF or look for this video on guaranteed uh, returns ideas. But those ideas do not get you to financial freedom that easily because when you have guarantee, your real return is low. If you want to get to financial freedom, if that's your ultimate objective, you have to be ready for pain along the way. The journey up is up and it's like a yo-yo. I heard of this story once before. There's this girl throwing a yo-yo. It's like a stock market up, down, up, down. Are you focusing on the yo-yo or are you focusing on the girl where she's standing on the escalator playing on this yo-yo? When she's on the escalator going up, it's up, down, up, down, but the long-term trend is up. If you're asking, would it come up straight away? Is it the bottom? Then you're looking at the wrong picture. You should be focused that the girl is standing on escalator going up. Regardless of the market's up down, if you're investing long term, you will win. I want each and every one of you watching this to win. To really avoid making mistakes that I've commonly mentioned in this community, I've shared very freely ideas that I give to private clients because whether you know we work together or not, I, I, I really feel these points really will help more people reach financial freedom and you know so many people don't succeed investing i think that's the truth if you look there are more than 200,000 millionaires in Singapore but how many of them actually get there with property majority of them in my opinion but in terms of financial investing much lesser people that's why investing while well, it's very easy to press a button is very difficult to execute and in this community you hear a lot of tips on it and back to the point of these questions a very similar looking question comes upon like this will it go down further now i i think this explains it best because when you're asking this question will this company go go down further that means you haven't done enough due diligence that means you're not ready to invest into this company that is the simple truth of it i don't want to hide anything i don't want to sugarcoat anything that means you're not not ready to to invest in the company. you don't love the business enough you don't think the prospects are good enough regardless of the price whether it goes down a little bit further or not this is by Charlie Munger. I'd like to share this with you. This reads, great investing requires a lot of delayed gratification, which means, yes, you, go, you, you may be wrong for a long period of time, but great investing re requires delayed gratification. You cannot consume your wins. You must wait it out for a long period of time. This ties into a, a few points on financial freedom. This is by Albert Einstein. Compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Why does he say so? You know, we've always heard before, investing long term, investing long term. But when it comes to investing, a lot of times investors feel two, three years is long term really. That's because nowadays we press buttons so quickly, everything is instant. But real returns are 10 years and more. Let me pull out for you to see this chart over here. This is something I commonly give to, to private clients when we do an investment policy statement. You will look that at the blue line, that is where you compound. You realize that the orange line is your capital and the blue line is the compounding effect. At fifth year, sixth year, is there a lot of difference between the blue line and the red line? Not, right? Simply because there's not that many years to compound. If you thought five years was long to compound, get that, get that change. Look 10 years and beyond. Then you'll start to see the blue line is way, way, way more. That is the exact re reason why Albert Einstein says it compounding is the eighth wonder. 
This can be this 500,000 financial freedom pot, you can build it with $1,000 consistently for 21 years. If you're age of 30 now, you can do that even before you reach 55, you can get complete that journey. 500,000 pot. If you want a million dollars, double that, 2,000 a month at 6% return. This is calculated purely on 6%. While well, this is a nice curve up, again, the journey is up and down. That's where I come in in terms of personal coaching to make sure investment mistakes are avoided. Let's, let's really look to a different question. This is uh, another curious question I've seen before. I'm looking for something more aggressive, higher risk, but of course still sound alternatives to maximize money. I've, I've heard of this many times. I'm, I'm, I'm aggressive, I'm convert aggressive, I'm looking for high risk, I just want the returns. I can't answer that question because uh, that is fundamentally a problem. Uh, my best answer to that, let me try on it, is actually with this by Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I repeat that again. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. So many times you think you are an aggressive investor, but at the root of it, you haven't felt losses before. How many times have you lost money? And you know, if you if you lost money because you missed out on discount, you really feel the pain. What more losing 10,000 investments? What more losing 100,000 investments? Have you really thought through it or not? Because if you think you are an aggressive investor, then when a rubber meets the road, you realize you actually don't like losses that much. You're actually quite risk averse. That is a reality. For new, new investors, I've always advocated before. You don't know your risk appetite. You have to earn a sort of caution. You cannot be too aggressive because you, you really get that feeling only when you are in this journey for many years. Then you're qualified to answer that question. So again, that, that, that question had a lot of technical parts. And I have something else to show you also from Charlie Munger, which is a lot of high IQ people are terrible investors because they've got terrible temperaments. Now, successful investing and IQ, it is true. It, it has very little correlation. I also don't know why. Because people who are smart, act smart, act too fast, don't trust advice too readily. And again, uh, being smart works in your work. Being smart works in your life. But when it comes to investing, you have to surrender that smartness because you, investing is always investing for the future. Nobody knows the future. The higher IQ someone is, if you are someone very smart, you, you will tend to overestimate, tend to be overconfident about the future. You tend to try to predict markets, you try, try to predict a stock price. That's gonna get you into trouble. That's why I've always advocated, surrender that, be broad based, be diversified, let it run its course. Use your brilliance in your work, use your brilliance in your business, you reap a lot more returns. Too many smart people, I've realized, don't make money when it comes to investing. That's the truth. That really hurts. But if you're smart, really surrender that. Take a different approach. Because ultimately what you want is to win, correct? If you want to win, you have to give up control. You have to give up, you have to surrender, thinking you know what's going to happen in the future. If the, if the relative strategy makes sense really, get invested. Don't doubt it. Look 10 years, 20 years, and you will see your returns. That's, that's a real honest, hard to heart sharing I have for you. I have a further, question that is very interesting to show you over here. I want a net return higher than 4% willing to take on risk of the market. Similar to the previous question, overestimating the ability to take on risk. Uh, I, have, I have a further point to that. I have seen before private clients, they, they don't scream when markets come down 10% in two months, but they scream when markets lose 10% over two years. They start to feel despondent. The news is all negative. They start to lose confidence on it. That is why very often the real pain is in time, it's not in the amount of volatility. If 10% is lost in two months and recovers, the pain is actually very short-lived. The real ability to hold it out, to really know whether you're high risk or not, is when you can hold losses for years. Most successful businessmen can tolerate losses for many, many, many years. That's why they deserve their wealth. That's why they deserve to compound their money. So if you are, if you are new to investing, you really don't know that long-term pain, be very cautious, look for advisor. I, I've seen before too many suggest, if you're a new, new advisor, look for a robot advisor, do it yourself. That is absolutely wrong. Simply because a robot advisor only executes for you, it doesn't coach you. If you are new, that means you're bound to make mistakes, correct? If you're new at badminton, you're definitely gonna make beginner mistakes and it's just gonna cost you winning the game. Again, if you are looking to win the game, pay the cost for it, pay the time for it, that is all that matters. Targeting 4% return, you know, I have a quick story to share. I once opened an ice cream business. I targeted to open so many outlets, I targeted so many revenue. 
at that point of time I was much younger I even had that fantasy to become like Singapore's leading ice cream chain long story short it didn't work everything was done on paper but when it comes to comes to the rubber meeting road execution was terrible too many investors target returns but don't target execution that is why when it comes to investing execution matters are you able to hold for that period of time have you considered the pain or have are you are you satisfied with the strategy and willing to surrender control of market direction if this applies to you look for me you're ready to invest that means you are coachable that means you are ready to start your financial journey don't think of again back to the first question don't think of should we invest now and then there's supposedly a green light that never is the case because whether you invest now or, or slightly down the road it doesn't really matter because when it comes to 20 years 15 years it's relatively the same period that's really, that's what that you should be focusing your execution in any case that can be answered i pull out one of my favorite funds to, to let you over here first day bridge 10 year return is 5.2 percent per annum since inception 6.6 percent per annum what this tells you is when you have a very long period of time the returns are kind of locked in really regardless you invest now one year one year down the road the the market sentiment is slightly different it doesn't really matter when you need 10 years and more it's kind of locked in already first day bridge is a diversified fund that's balanced equities and bonds which means five to six percent is going to be doable what you need to target is your own execution what you need to target is you know avoiding mistakes what is your game plan are you on track to putting more and more to build up this pot that is the execution when it comes to investing see like a business then you can win see like a business you win then you get to financial freedom i want each and everyone lis listening to this get to financial freedom that's why i'm sharing this so openly with you everybody can get to a million dollars in terms of financial investing you don't need 10 20 percent you just need a consistent approach five six seven percent you can get there with the right amounts targeted you can definitely get there so with that i'll sign off inviting you again if you haven't subscribed to smash on subscribe i'll see you in a future video thank you Bye bye